to the CEO to resolve the impasse of who must brief Siamejo. On the 11th of May, the PPSA CEO responds maintaining that position that the PP must brief Sianejo. On the 12th of May, the letter from myself to the PP indicating that hearings will resume on the 17th of May. On the 15th of May, Sianejo withdraws two days before the resumption of the meeting. On the 16th of May, 2023, the letter from the chair to Sianejo requesting clarity and for them to appear, appear before the committee, they refuse. On the 17th of May, 2023, the PP confirmed in our meeting in this room that Sianejo is no longer acting for her and requested assistance via the PPSA in, in procuring the services of China attorneys who are also on the panel of attorneys for the PPSA. Full reasons for Sianejo no longer acting were not apparent as they invoked professional legal privilege, which the PP did not waive. The PP did, however, indicate to the media that it was because of funding and payment issues. On the 18th of May, I write to the PP PBSA CEO asking that it assist the PP by appointing Chan. On the 23rd of May, 2023, Chinese attorneys appointed as correspondent attorneys. Since then, there would have been regular correspondence with China attorneys and the Secretariat about appointing counsel. The 24th of May, China indicated that Advocate Mpofu will not accept the brief unless the juniors are appointed. On the 25th of May, the state attorney informs China that approval has been granted to also appoint the two juniors to support Advocate Mpofu as per his request. On the 29th of May, the state attorney advises the PPSA that council has revised their fees and it's now increased. On the 2nd of June, 2023, this committee met and resolved to proceed. China attorneys receives communication from state attorney informing them that the council's revised fees have been agreed to and they can proceed to brief council. I write a letter to China indicating that inquiry will now resume as the request of council have been met. That resumption will be on the 5th of June, Monday past. I also indicate uh, that uh, having regards to the request to conclude the evidence on Tosasa CR-17 and the SARS, um, as we would have been ventilated and discussed in the committee meeting on Friday, that that's the route I'm considering to, to take. But in that letter, I also indicate to China attorneys and the PP that they need to give their comment on that intention that I'm considering by Sunday, 1300 hours. On the 4th of June, the letter from China indicating they can't brief counsel as they need to familiarize themselves with the records in the matter despite the PP indicating <laughs> Advocate Mpofu is their representative of choice. The letter arrives in the evening, whereas we gave a 1 p.m. or 1300 hours deadline if there were issues to raise. 
I send a letter to China indicating that consideration is still being given mm -hmm. to an approach of allowing evidence to be concluded on CR-17 processor and SARS and a deadline for comment extended to the 5th of June at 2 from the 5th, from the 4th of June at 1300 hours. So I repeat um, the matter in the letter. On the 5th of June, 2023, late afternoon, I received a letter from China attorneys saying, Mr. China is in hospital and no one else can respond to Chen's letter. The letter from the chairperson to China uh, in terms of the decision in respect of conclusion of evidence on CR-17 processor and SARS. In this letter that I write to China, I also provide draft directives incorporating the process to provide for this decision. The 6th of June, yesterday, I received a letter from the PP personally to me, raising request for the following issues. One, recusal and intention to apply for the recusal of the chair. Concern regarding legal representation. And thirdly, objection to the way forward as indicated in that letter in the manner that the committee so fit and, and discuss on Friday the 2nd of June that we must endeavor to finish the first part, which involves CR-17 Bosasa, <clears throat> as well as uh, SARS uh, and, and Gordon Matters. I wanted this point before this brief tabling of the correspondence and the recapping uh, by the legal advisor to indicate that uh, one for the for the for the intention by the PP to to ask for the recusal of the chair. Um, I want to indicate that uh, if the PP would want to proceed on that matter, um, I would want to indicate that. Uh, I would expect a recusal application in writing submitted by Friday, 1300 hours. And I will endeavor as a chairperson to respond in writing to that recusal application by Monday, 1300 hours. There will be no oral presentation of the recusal that will be permitted. Two, on the issue of objecting to the way forward, the objection is noted, um, but the committee has indicated its own uh, decision as to how it wants to proceed. And therefore that matter stands. Thirdly, on the issue of legal representation, who would have received this morning a letter from the, the PPSA, from the CEO, indicating that uh, they have exercised um, their prerogative and their right on the options that uh, <clears throat> would have been shared in the PP's letter in paragraph 28, that uh, given the fact that the, the new attorneys have been hospitalized, um, that uh, the state attorney have now in source and taken over that task. Uh, there's a letter in that regard. Um, I think the correspondence will also indicate um, that there is a signal to have received from uh, Mr. Chane 
uh, from a Dr. Farai Dube, who is indicating that you would have admitted him on the 5th of June, and that uh, when he's ready, is subject to further notice. That's what the letter uh, that we've also received this morning uh, indicate. So by all accounts, all of the issues put, the three issues put as part of the uh, demand by the PP have now been attended to. Um, and I would want now to ask uh, the legal advisor and uh, Mr. Roma to briefly, as you would have received this correspondence, quickly to recap uh, some of the things I would have touched. Um, and thereafter, I will open the platform for interaction and engagement. I thank you. Yes, I have, I have, I have noted all of those hands. Uh, Miss Ibai. Yeah. Yeah, good morning. Chair, good morning. Morning, Honorable Mautu. Yes, my hand has been up, uh, Chair, even before you started speaking, but I respected you and thought that you will finish. Well, I hoped against hope, you know, sometimes we give in even murders, murderers and rapists a chance. So uh, when you are speaking, I, I thought you are coming closer to saying, based on the above, I therefore resign, which didn't come through. So, okay, but my, my hand is up. I, no, no, Chair, I want to address you. My hand has been up since you started speaking. Can I please speak before you give the platform today, whoever you want to speak to? Because this is very important. My hand was up before you even began speaking, Chair. Just, just hold, Miss Fatima Ibrahim. Let, let me hear you. And I, 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 I want to indicate up front, I think you have started on the wrong note. We are in, 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 in a parliamentary session. And yes, your I'm aware. Language, your language that you are using, I want to, you to, to, to restrain yourself from that language that you are using. What is wrong with J J No, say? there's nothing wrong, Chair. <clears throat> there's nothing wrong. I, 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 and you are not you going to give us that attitude. I, I, there's nothing I, I, wrong. I, I, you, but don't, don't come with that attitude. Don't come with that attitude. Honorable Malema, you have not been recognized to speak. You are not going to do that. But I'm calling you to order. I'm calling you to That's order. order. That's not order that you are calling. You are out I of order. There is a speaker on the floor. You are out of order. Honorable Malema, I have not recognized you. Honorable Maute, I want you to continue. Yes. Chair, thank you. Chair, I'm going to read a letter that you wrote to the speaker about you. And please just bear with me. I need to read it. No, it's this is not a platform for you to read No, letters. it is, Chair, but it's my time. You can't tell me what to do with my time, Chair. This letter is important. It speaks about you, Chair, and this committee. Just hear me out. What is wrong that's, with that's you? Not a point of order. That's not a point of order. You're getting into issues Chair, of I'm debate. I'm saying to you. the point of order? Chair, it's, it's the time that I... Uh, uh, you've given me time to speak. You can't tell me what to speak, what to say. Now, Honorable I allow Mautre, me to say what I want to say. Honorable Mautwe, yes. we are going to be relevant to the purpose of today. I'm not going to allow things that are happening outside outside of this inquiry to give them a, a presentation. This inquiry and this meeting is not what about is that. Can I want to be on that. Chair, on a point of order. What is your point of order, Honorable Mautwe? No, yes. it's Honorable Malam, Chair. It has come to our attention that you... Miss, uh, the late Miss uh, Peterson, may her soul rest in peace, and the chief whip of the ANC, Miss Pema Jordina, have been implicated in serious allegations of impropriety. These allegations are of a matter of a nature that they threaten to severely undermine the credibility of parliament and undermine the work of section 194 inquiry, our way. Specifically, Chair, this you and the two members are accused of soliciting a bribe from the public protector advocate Mkrobani, as alleged by her husband, Mr. Davis Kosan. Chair, no point to order. A case has been lodged already with the South African Police Service, and there is prima facie evidence order when order there is order when I'm claims, Chair, in the, in the including verifiable WhatsApp communication between Mr. Kosan and the late Ms. Peterson. 
Given the gravity of these allegations, Chair, and in the interest of pre preserving the credibility and integrity of our parliament, I hereby humbly request you, Chair, to recuse yourself from this committee so that you can continue without any cloud hanging over anybody, especially at the head of this committee. Furthermore, Chair, it would be prudent for, this, for you and the members to take a leave from the National Assembly while that investigation is still uh, undergoing. Chair, it is in the interest of this country that this matter must be concluded. Now, you can't come here and behave as if there are no issues against you. We are pleading with you as members of parliament, we are pleading with you as members of this committee to say, recuse yourself. It can't be everything about you. What's so special about you, Chair? Recuse Thank yourself. You. Anything Chair, with you, another person to come here Thank and you, you stand for this Martin. committee Thank without you, you being at the helm of this committee. Because now you are even emotional. With, before even Thank we you, start Martin. anything, you're like emotional made. because you are going to be you you Thank you, Honorable Mautwe. Your, 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 your point is made. And it's noted. We'll respond to it. Honorable Malema. Chair, thank you very much. Um, I think that uh, Honorable Mautwe raised uh, the points that I wanted to raise. And this is confirmed uh, precisely by your behavior just when we started this meeting. There's no way you will proceed as if uh, there's nothing happening around your name. And that's why you are being emotional about everything. You can do what you are doing there. You know that there is an allegation of a, a bribe against you. And it has been made by your member that you are soliciting a bribe. A and therefore, uh, it doesn't help anyone uh, to be sitting here with a chairperson who's facing such serious allegations. And uh, we ask him that you recuse yourself, especially from chairing. Uh, because these allegations are too serious. And then uh, anyone can come and chair uh, the committee. This is for the sake of the integrity of the uh, process and for the sake of the integrity of this committee and for the public protector to see justice being done. Not justice only being done, but it has to be seen that indeed justice uh, is being done. So you are... Uh, somehow under a, a very serious dark cloud. And, and this is going to be, affect your judgment. It's going to affect uh, your performance and uh, the tantrums and the behavior you displayed just this morning. It's a confirmation that you came with an attitude that nobody will tell you anything. This does not belong to you. It's not one of the tepaways in your kitchen. You don't have to be uh, the, uh, so personally uh, wanting to be involved that we, without you, it will not be a correct committee. It will still be parliament committee uh, without you. Please give yourself time and your chief whip to go and sort out this mess that you have created with the late Tina. And, and once you have done that, you can fully participate in parliament. So that's my submission, Thank Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Honorable Olomisa. Sorry, Chair, I raised a point of order. I, I, I have noted your head, Honorable Milam. Uh, is he continue or must I continue, sir? I have recognized you, Honorable Olami, sir. Thank you very much, Chair. Good morning to everybody. Uh, what I would like to request from you is to state briefly why the public protector is asking you to recuse yourself because you didn't tell us the reasons. We know that the earlier reasons which she advanced, uh, those ones were rejected by the court. Uh, what is the new version of herself this time around which calls you to recuse yourself? Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mr. Honorable Milam. Chairperson, um, I think that the wrong approach has been adopted here by Honourable Mawatwe and Honourable Malema. Um, first of all, the, there has been no correspondence tabled in this regard to this committee. So if they, if they want us to consider correspondence, then they must submit it to the committee that we can consider it properly. That's the first point. The second is that 
the committee and uh, its structures were appointed by parliament and it would be up to the national assembly as a body to then appoint uh, a person as an alternate and and frankly the allegations that they're making should be made as part of a substantive motion they can't just come here and, and throw allegations around against a member of the house they have to submit a substantive allegation so i think that the entire wrong approach has been adopted to this this particular element uh, and i would ask that you rule in that regard thank you chair thank you thank you honorable mylan just before i i make a ruling is there any other member uh who wanted to comment on this before i make a ruling sure. uh, hon honorable uh, uh Mankezi Tlape and honorable maneli thanks uh chairperson and greetings to the colleagues on the platform Chair, I just wanted to speak on what uh, has just been said by Honorable Mylam, that this committee has been appointed by Parliament. We have nothing before us as this committee that suggests the change, uh, the change in how we have been structured. Now, I would say, Chair, my submission is that we stay put as this committee until if ever we get anything from parliament or from the office of the speaker, we have nothing. We have been formulated and we have been uh, appointed by this committee as the chairperson. We have nothing from parliament to this effect. Thank you, Chair. Can I proceed, Chair? Okay, just just wait. I'm told our mic is not picking up. Okay, can you hear me, Honorable Maneli? I can hear you, Honorable Chair. Please proceed. <clears throat> Thank you, Honorable Chair. Uh, greetings to members, uh, the public protector, um, who are on the line. <clears throat> Chair? I think the points have now been covered. Uh, that in the first place, we are entertaining a matter that is not before this committee. And I don't think it is the task of this committee to pretend to be the speaker if a matter is handled by the speaker. Uh, ours should be about the matter that comes before the committee. This includes if there is a recusal application, you've already clarified in the journey that you are taking us through, that if that would happen, there would be a response to it at an appropriate time, and that the committee can entertain the matter once it is before the committee. We are proceeding on the basis that there was a committee meeting, and that committee meeting made it clear even on Friday that we would not entertain matters that are not before the committee. At that time, it was allegations in the media, and those were not matters that were before the committee. Even at this point, it is still allegations that get made elsewhere and nothing substantive that has been put either before parliament or the committee. And let's just remember that our task is an inquiry clearly defined, and as such, we should be uh, focusing on chair. And, and, and I want that at least we proceed from that uh, angle, Chair, so that we engage the matters that you have put before the committee, because we have not yet engaged those pending uh, the other people that were still going to speak, the legal and so on. Uh, and then we can engage comprehensive. Otherwise, we are now uh, taken to the side shows uh, from the main stage. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Maneli. Honorable Heron. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, Chair, I just wanted to respond to um, the uh, point of order, the proposal from uh, the input from Honorable Milam. Um, I think it's wrong to call for a substantive motion in the, co in the context in which we are currently in. Um, we have all invested substan substantial time as members of this committee 
Parliament and the PPSA have invested substantially financially in this process. Um, there are these allegations, and I don't wish to make any predetermined, um, I have no predetermined ideas to whether there's veracity to the allegations or not, but the allegations do go to the heart of what we've been trying to achieve over the last year, which is to make sure that there is a substantially free, fair, and untainted process. So I, I do not call for you to recuse yourself. I think that's a decision you have to make for yourself. But in giving direction and in response um, that, that you intend to do now, I do hope that we are, that, that you uh, are cognizant of the, the, the need for this whole process, the amount of time and money that we've invested in it to retain its credibility. And I don't know how you're going to navigate that, um, but I, I think that um, Honorable Milam is wrong to suggest that the process and the decision-making and the discussion must take place outside of this committee, which committee is, re is required to make a recommendation to the National Assembly based on a free and fair process, untainted um, about whether the public protector is fit to hold office in a nutshell. And um, with these allegations, we need some clear direction as to how that can be achieved. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mayra, Honorable Zumula. And then Honorable Sukas. Um, thank you, Che. Um, I want to agree with Honorable Heron here in the sense that, Chairperson, this process, for the longest time, there's been a very, very strong argument regarding the integrity of the process, the fairness of the process, and ensuring that the process is above board to avoid a case whereby, after the conclusion of a process that takes a lot of money, a lot of time, and then when it goes to legal scrutiny, um, you find that the entire process gets to be, um, you know, at the report gets to be thrown away by court of law because of um, some aspects or some parts of the process where uh, were not done above board. So in that context, Chair, the issue of your recusal is a matter that should um, be about your conscience. Um, um, where you are going to say because of these allegations and it's not just allegations that uh, one would say there is, it's just rumors there is whatsapp conversations there is voice recordings therefore we cannot make this a non-issue now that speaks it's about you chair and what you deem to be something that is morally and ethically upright however we can't dictate your consciousness um, a lot of people uh, you know, uh, might not have the kind of um, uh, moral upstanding for them to take such decisions. However, it is our view that there needs to be guidance in terms of even the legal team or um, legal team um, uh, that is supporting this committee to so say in such a case, given the, 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 the strength of these allegations, we can't just depend on you to recuse yourself, Chair. There needs to be guidance from the legal um, team to say, in light of these strong allegations, which are backed up by evidence that need investigation, I agree with Honorable Heron to say, um, we can't determine or we can't conclude whether they are true or not. But at the same time, we can't just continue as if there is nothing that has been alleged with evidence that is in the public domain that is um, that is imploring that there are members of parliament who sit on this committee and others do not sit on this committee who solicited bribes in order to influence the direction of the uh, of this particular inquiry now if you are going to preside over that inquiry or preside over um, we're going to continue presiding over the inquiry Whereas that these strong allegations, you know, would be failing in terms of our job as members of parliament to sit on this committee if we're to allow that. So that is why um, I'm saying that there are two options. The first option, it is you um, taking a conscious decision. If you call Naku. the second one, it is the legal team that is supporting this committee to advise that in such a um, such a case when there is 
such strong allegations against a chairperson. And we are not alleged, Chair, to, we are not, these allegations have got, it's not a matter of allegations about something that is not related to this inquiry. It is at the core or the heart of this inquiry. So that is why I would want the, the legal team to assist in terms of providing advice as to Besides your recusal, your own decision to recuse yourself, what could be the other avenue that could be taken to um, to restore the credibility or to assure the credibility of the process, not only to the members of parliament advocating Kweban, but to the entire citizens that when parliament or members of parliament are facing such strong, um, serious allegations, you know, parliament does not just continue as if nothing has been um, you know nothing has been said so that is um, our contribution on the matter chair thank you thank you honorable zungola honorable sukas yes chair thank you so much good morning um to you chair good morning to all the members um present and those in the in the venue i want to extend um, can you hear me, can you hear me? yes i can hear you chair can you hear me can you hear me? Can't hear you, Honorable Sukas. Let's just quickly fix this. Just take a pause. Recording stopped. I hope they would hear me. We'll, we'll take a... Uh, Recording in progress. Back at 11, the IT says there's a device active in this room, but they need to pick up, which is creating all of this. So uh, you can indicate to them we'll be... Can, yeah, we'll be back at 11. Is, is it, can you hear me now, Honorable Sukas? 
I can hear you, Chair. Can you hear me? Okay. I can hear you. Let's proceed then. Uh, please go ahead. Yes, Chair. As I said, I was greeting everyone, um, the members there in the in the venue with you as well. And I want to extend our sincere condolences to your organization, the African National Congress, at the loss of um, Honorable Tina Jumat Peterson. I, um, Chair, want to say the I want to pick up from what was said by Honorable Zungula <clears throat> that the adverse is also true. The adverse in terms of the public's view of this process. The public has a view that the integrity of parliament to fulfill its obligation and constitutional duty is compromised because pa party representatives act not in the interest of the public, but in the interest of, of their parties. So the adverse is also true, that there is an expectation that we, we, uh, the process would not conclude and that we would not be able to fulfill our um, oversight properly. We have a duty to rectify and to restore the trust of the public in our processes, the processes of parliament. And, um, Chair, we cannot afford any further delays. The issues that have been raised, we need to also say that because of the accusations or the notion that the process not would not be fair or that the integrity of the process being questioned, that actually so much has been done to ensure fairness to the process. And we cannot... Um, um, even the, the issues that are being raised now against yourself in terms of extortion, all of those things, I would, <laughs> I, I will not go into that other than to say that actually the process has, um, you know, been almost, um, uh, you know, expanded in its, in its, in its uh, um, um, leeway to ensure that every single effort is made that fairness is done to to the to the to the uh, public protector. So, from the beginning of the process, um, I think Honourable Mulder was the one that raised it first. There has always been the fear by myself and several members that we will not hear the PP answer our questions. We have seen frivolous cases dismissed, and we cannot forever go in this limbo while the cost meter keeps on ticking up. Um, I think the last time we had a, an amount of 26.4 million rand. Chair, I ask you not to recuse yourself. You have been fair to the PP. This process has been more than fair to the PP. We must conclude. We owe it to the poor and the vulnerable. And I propose that just as in court that you set down the days for the hearing, you allocate the time for various parties and they use that time or they don't use that time. But we cannot give more delays. We have an extensive written record, and I urge you to keep the time allocated brief and that the committee has am ample time to question the PP or if she does not make herself available, uh, deliberate, that we deliberate and obtain assistance um, from the evidence leaders. Um, we, we cannot um, continue. Uh, what I want to say is we cannot allow the process now to even uh, be... Uh, to add more to it, add more flavor to the sense of instability, throwing processes, um, this process off culture. We cannot do that. It is, it is not just, it is not right. It is not just to the people that we serve and it is not right in terms of our own duty um, as parliament to do oversight over chapter nine constitution. Um, 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 my apologies, uh, chapter nine um, institutions. So those are my, my inputs, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable uh, Sukas, Honorable Majosi, followed by Honorable Nalda. Thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Good morning, all Honorable Members and uh, all legal teams that are present today. Uh, Chair, I, I think when we spoke about this two days back, we had agreed that we can't de uh, derail anymore. Uh, we must deal with the matters that are at hand, and we also approved the matter of a program. Uh, I think um, we 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 can't be dealing with thumb sucking 
uh, of information and saying eh, there are allegations. Yes, there are allegations. And up until they are proven to be true with evidence that will be brought forward, we can't then be thumbsucking that uh, uh, out of your own conscience or what should happen. But uh, we should be dealing what we have in front of us. And right now, we had approved a, a program that we should be continuing with. These are other tactics that are derailing this committee so that we don't get to the end of the report and that we don't actually uh, finish the, the inquiry and the mandate that we have been uh, 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 given. So I, I, I don't think you should recuse yourself. If this committee uh, had all the evidence at hand, that uh, you are actually involved in certain things and what what not and what not would not be in 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 in, in disagreement we would all be agreeing that we uh chairperson we want you to recuse yourself but that is not the case we can't be dealing with allegation and thumb sucking that there is evidence if there is evidence where is it because it should be brought forward so honestly, we are just uh, being delayed here so that we don't finish with this report. And we've been we've been having these tactics for a long time, Chairperson. It's not something that comes now. It's not something that um, uh, it's uh, it's it's upright because it has happened because of what allegations have been brought forward. We've we've been having these uh, delaying tactics for a long time, and we can't deal with it. Let the committee. Uh, continue with its work and the chairperson will continue being the chairperson of the com committee up until we get that evidence that no, the chairperson is involved in one, two, three, and it has been proven. Because we can't be talking about allegation, talking about um, evidence that is there, but at the same time, we are saying it is out of your own conscience. No, let us, let us, let us be true members. Of, on, of parliament and serve with integrity on a serious note. We, can, we cannot go, continue like this. I, I, I don't think that the chairperson should recuse uh, himself and we must continue with the adopted program. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Majosi, for your contribution. Honorable Ma uh, Malda. Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, colleagues. The more things change, the more they stay the same. On the first day of this committee's life, I predicted a delay strategy and a Stalingrad strategy. And I was, uh, it was, uh, I remember at the time, Advocate and Paulford took huge exception, but I was right. I was more than right. The fact of the matter is there's no credible mistrust from the public at this stage in this process. No credible mistrust at all. It's unfortunate that the attorneys of the public protector is ill at this stage, but we all know that justice delayed is justice denied. And we all want to see that the public protector gets the necessary representation. So I welcome the fact that the state attorney is prepared to step in, and I think it's appropriate. And there's no reason why that should not be welcomed by the public protector. Let's proceed then. It's very process to make allegations against the chairperson or members of this committee. Allegations is now being made. We all saw the alleged WhatsApp messages, and the allegations therein does not indicate at all any substantive evidence that we should consider whatsoever. Now, you did indicate that the refusal could be handled in the following manner: that you would, uh, that there should be a written application, and you've given the indication that that application. Yes. You, you were breaking. Can you hear me, so just, just reposition yourself. We can't hear you. You're breaking. Honorable Melda, is he still there? We've lost him. Chairperson, can you hear me? Yeah, you are muted. Chairperson, can you hear me? You very well. Can you hear me? <laughs> can you hear me now? Yeah, hello, hello. Yes, can you hear yes. me? Can hear you now. 
Thank you, Chairperson. No, I don't know what happened with uh, load sharing. No, the fact of the matter is that you've indicated how you intend to address if you receive a written refusal application, and you've indicated how and what form it should be, and that you will respond in writing. And until that time, if such an application is made, there's nothing to discuss further in terms of recusal whatsoever. Um, I think we have agreed on a program on Friday, and I think we should proceed to request you not to recuse yourself. It's in the interest of justice, it's in the interest of the public, of the public protector, that we proceed and conclude this process once and for all. And if the public protector may not be happy, or maybe I will tell, but she will have other avenues, but she's not going to derail this process. I want you to proceed immediately. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Honorable Melder. Um, I had asked that I wanted to make a ruling after the members have spoken. Um, so I see, Honorable Malema, is that a second bite that you want to have before I make a ruling? Yes, Chair. Okay, go ahead. Chair, there's uh, the story that there is no substantive motion uh, here. It's actually uh, neither here nor there. Uh, because we cannot meet here and then uh, behave like there are no issues. Uh, there's been a loss of life based on, amongst other things, these allegations. And we can't treat this matter as if it's not a serious matter. We came here with the understanding that um, you, on your own, will uh, perhaps in your introduction uh, make uh, uh, those remarks and ultimately say, because of these reasons, uh, I will not uh, uh, proceed. There's nothing thumbsacked here. People must know what is the definition of thumbsack. You don't go to a branch and cram a, a concept of thumbsack and abuse it at this platform. Allegations have been made and letters have been written to the speaker. Uh, WhatsApp messages have been uh, uh, publicized uh, implicating uh, the leadership uh, of this committee. And it, I know it's very difficult to persuade the corrupt to agree with us uh, uh, in this regard because their unity is based on principle of corruption. And it's very unfortunate that other leaders of the opposition have joined the bandwagon of defending allegations of corruption. We would have failed in our own uh, duty as, as a committee and as parliamentarians not to attend to these matters if we come uh, in this fashion and not say anything. Our duty is to confront con corruption and bribery at any given moment where it raises its ugly head. And, Chair, we're saying we're speaking to your conscience. It's only you and you alone. Without any motion being put forward, without any substantive motion being put forward, you have a duty yourself to protect uh, the integrity uh, of this commission. So a public protector must appear before a person who is alleged to have solicited a bribe in order for her to get a, a fair trial. And then people say it will be in the best interest of public protector to proceed. It's not correct. It will not be. Uh, there is a huge dark cloud hanging over your head. And recusal does not mean a guilty verdict. You say there are these matters. Let me allow the process to continue uh, untainted. And once these matters have been clarified, we'll come back to proceed uh, with our matters. Even the judges do that on a daily basis. It doesn't mean they are weak. It doesn't mean they say they accept responsibility, uh, that they are conflicted. Sometimes they just say, for the sake of the progress, it doesn't mean I agree with him. And that's what we are appealing to. Uh, members of parliament who are not driven by uh, uh, who are not driven by corruption will be, be standing up today and saying, we're not finding the chair guilty, but we think it's the right thing to do for the chair to recuse himself. No one has ever said the committee must stop. So anyone who says this is a delay tactic, you are you are hallucinating. There's no one who has ever said, let's delay this. We said, let the chair stand aside. 
and one amongst us will rise uh, to proceed on this matter. The story that we're given a mandate by parliament to proceed on this matter, there were no disallegations when parliament said, let's proceed. So don't talk like, no, we are still the same way we were when we established by parliament. It's not correct. When parliament established us, no one solicited a bribe of 600,000, 200 for each. And you come here and want to behave like uh, our people are not implicated in the bribe scandal. Shame on you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Malema. The following uh, hands will be the last hand I, I recognize and then make a ruling thereafter. Uh, it would be Honorable Paula Ngola, Honorable Mautwe, Honorable Mananiso, Honorable Majosi, Honorable Zungula, and Honorable, Honorable Zungula, Honorable Maneli, and I will come here at uh, uh, S12A uh, to give the member who's here to, to close that and then Thereafter, I make the ruling. I, I, I now have um, um, three members, four with Honorable Manel, Ma, Ma, Malema, five on, on the second bite. And I would want those members with the second bite to be much shorter. I've given you an opportunity uh, to, to speak. Over to you, Honorable Paul Angola. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Uh, uh, indeed, uh, we are devastated uh, with the passing of uh, a member of this committee. We hope and wish that uh, her family will heal. So I think we've made a mistake when we started this meeting. We should have added an item in the agenda that is uh, Ruma Mungarizim. Uh, because now the I meeting get what item? Ruma Mongarism. The meeting now is a standstill chair because of uh, some rumors that are making rounds out there. But the reality is, chair, in this committee, we have uh, nothing concrete to confirm the rumors that are, may, are being made by media out there. But uh, I think, uh, let, let me leave that point. We've been here at some point uh, where there's been applications for recusal. And it is in my belief that we have handled those matters properly as the committee. And I don't want us to deflect from the system we've created ourselves. That when you want to, a particular Tolangola must recuse himself. We have set a system of how you do that. You don't come and make announcement in a meeting, uh, recuse yourself, recuse yourself and all that. You do that properly in writing. There must be a response then there must be an engagement by the committee. Now, why engaging something that has not been written to the committee as a recusal application? We're engaging uh, just a, a throw of words in the committee meeting. And I am quite disappointed uh, uh, by, the, by the members of the committee to even entertain it and make it a committee discussion that there is a recusal application, recuse yourself and all that thing, which is something that we have as uh, this committee dealt with before, and we've done it very much properly and very much decently. So I want to propose that we don't entertain anything that is not returned to the committee as a discussion of this committee. We'll await a clear communication from whoever wants to make that kind of application. Then we'll discuss it and indulge on it as this committee. But for now, we have nothing of that sort. 
So can we proceed, Chairperson, with the business that which we set this meeting for today? I want to plead with the chair. I want to plead with members of the committee that we proceed with the business that which we set this committee, for, this meeting for today. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Thank you, Honorable Balangola. Honorable Maute, your second bite. Yeah, no, thank you, Chair. I wasn't going to speak after the president of the EFA because he covered me greatly, but I'm tempted now because of the, this colleague who just spoke before. Chair, we can't ignore the fact that you are headlines. You, you've made headlines. Your name has made headlines. And that's what the committee members should know. So you are a topic in South Africa and possibly beyond the borders of South Africa that you are implicated in a scandal, corruption scandal of soliciting money. The WhatsApp messages are there. The evidence is there. It's been given. It's very sad that one of our own is no more now today. A day after those messages were made public. So it's a public issue. And you are chairing this committee. Where else can we speak to you or about you if not in this committee? And we are saying to you, we wrote to parliament, by the way. And chair, this matter is even in, in front of the ethics committee where you are a member yourself. So members of parliament can't say that there's no evidence and therefore let's just ignore everything else. The matter is sitting with the ethics committee. That is a fact. The matter about you and the claims again about your corruption. Now, Chair, please, we are saying to you, you are frustrating us. You see now we spent almost more than an hour now discussing you. When you started correctly by addressing us, we were hoping, like just at the end, we came with it properly, like timelines like that. This is where we are. This is where we started. This is the letters where I therefore resigned. I leave you committee with this. That's what we expected from you. Now we are all over fighting, trying to make sense to you, pleading with your conscience. Our chair, just please be honorable and say, my name is out there in the media. When you switch on the TV, the radio, the newspapers, your name is there. These colleagues, their names are not there. Well, not as yet, but yours are there. Your name is there. It's about you. Now, recuse yourself so that we can finish this matter of the inquiry. We want to finish. That's why we are here. That's why we came here. We came here because we want to finish. Your party is the majority. They will still appoint another ANC chairperson. We don't want to be those things of chairperson ourselves. Maybe you think we want to take the chairpersonship. No, we don't want it. We are holding members of parliament accountable. That is our job. That is our mandate. So please, it's not true that this matter is not before parliament. This matter is before parliament. This matter is before the ethics committee. And because you are chairing this committee, we can't therefore ignore that there's claims of corruption, allegations of corruption against you. Recuse yourself, Chair. We're pleading with you. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Manani, sir. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, one, I want to actually uh, welcome your presentation. And mine is just an order on you. To say, as the Chairperson, please direct the meeting. Because this thing of second bite, I, I don't think it is honorable on the basis that you have given members to actually discuss their issues and members have made, been making inputs with regards to the issue at hand. So please, please take the decision with regards to whatever that has been discussed and stop this thing that some of us, we are abused here. We can't be told that uh, about corruption and as if we are protecting corruption, the corruption that we don't know. And some of us, we are not corrupt. So please direct us, uh, uh, Chairperson. We, we can't be abused by Honorable Malema and Honorable Maudwe. We are not obsessed about it being Chairperson. No, you are talking absolute as rubbish as now. As it's as our as right as to speak. You are talking absolute please rubbish. Please protect us, Chair. It's our right to speak here. Yeah. We are not but abusing chair, you. What chair, do you mean? Chair, don't allow this thing. Please. What is rubbish, Honorable Malema? No, what is abuse? No, you know what is abuse? You are talking this. rubbish. That's <laughs> rubbish. Chairperson, don't Honorable allow this. Thing. It's going to degenerate all this committee meeting if you allow it. 
Please. Honorable Man Malema. Honorable Malema, I have not recognized you to speak in the first place. I want you to refrain from what you are doing, because that is completely out of order what you are doing. When a member is on the platform, when you have been given a platform twice, and you, you start doing that, no matter whether you like or you don't like what the member is saying, I would like you to refrain from doing that. Honorable Chair. Manani, so please. Chair, on the point of order. What's the point of order? Yeah, Chair, when we speak here, we address the committee through the chair. But once the member starts calling another member by name, then he's inviting him or her to respond. That's why you see Honorable Malama responding. We were speaking here. We never mentioned a name of anyone but you as the chair because we speak through you. Now this one of my so comes and, and calls our names. Why must we keep quiet? Because you're not protecting us yourself, Chair. You must protect us from the abuse of Abu Manani. So here, please. We won't, we won't respond if they don't want our name. We don't want There's to respond. There's nothing honorable about what you're doing. We don't want to respond to nothing. She's not saying anything anyway. We want to respond to the name as you. But when our names are called, no, we can't keep quiet. Protect us, Wena Chair. Please. Thank, thank you, Honorable Maute. Thank you, Honorable Maute. Honorable Manani, so please proceed. I think I have concluded by saying that please give us the direction. Leave this thing off second bite, third bite, and so on. Thank you, Honorable Mananiso. Honorable Zongola. Honorable Zongola. Uh, thank you, Chair. Unga can shout. Uh, Chair, I'm addressing you, Chair. Firstly, Chair. Firstly, Chairperson, there is no rumor mongering here. Um, this is not a case of a delay. Order. Chairperson, order. Order, Chairperson. Just, just pause, okay. Honorable, Honorable Bola. Chair, you are out of order. I'm calling an order on you. You are allowing this meeting to generate responses. Everyone now is raising their own hand to respond to a particular member and a particular member. And it now, <clears throat> sorry, it now has nothing to do with the context of which we're discussing as the committee. Now, Honorable Zungula is coming back only to respond to a particular comment. So, Chair, please rule yourself out of order. You are out of order yourself. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable uh, Tolangola. Uh, your point is, is noted. Uh, I have given a second bite to members and I've asked them to have a limited time to be briefed. But I do take the points you are making that the second bite must be on issues um, so that it's not just a repetition of the discussion. That point is taken, uh, as well as I would have taken the point of Honorable Mautwe that uh, as, as members address, they address the chair and not necessarily names and individuals. So thank you for that intervention. Please uh, proceed and conclude, Honorable Zuhula. Chair, you can't ask me to conclude whilst I said only one sentence and I was um, rudely interrupted by Honorable Nola. It, it is the second bite. I had limited it to everybody else. Please proceed. Thank you. I must proceed, not conclude. Um, firstly, Chair. Yes, Chair. But now I'm speaking, Chair. You are, you're not going to tell me to conclude, Moss. I've not are even we? made one point. You are, make, you are saying I must conclude. Go ahead, Honorable Zongola. Thank you, Slalo. Slalo, here there is a case opened. And this case opened, it is in relation to your conduct, your illegal conduct or allegations of illegality on your side, whereby it is alleged that you and other members of the ruling party were soliciting bribes in order to influence or direct this process towards a particular outcome. That on its own, Chair, it is a very, very serious allegation. And the evidence is in the public domain 
and not only in the public domain, but it has brought to the attention of the ethics committee, brought to the attention of the speaker. Therefore, if we are going to continue as if nothing has happened and there's no serious, serious allegation, it means, Jefferson, this committee and yourself is seriously undermining the role of parliament, the role of the justice system, and the seriously undermining um, the people of our country who always expect that parliament must act ethically. And if there are allegations that are there, then those allegations must be tested in order to give confidence that there's nothing to hide. The fact that we are going to have Abantu that are going to try to deflect and say this is not a serious issue or um, we are, um, there's a time wasting, whereas there's a case open. This is not just in the media. Media reported something that was in the, um, reported on a case that has been opened um, to the police. Therefore, Chairperson, I want to implore you, if there is any sense of consciousness or and the respect of the people of our country, the logical thing would be to step aside, allow those investigations, allow the ethics committee to process whatever it needs to process, allow the police to do the same thing as well. But your continued stay um, in your role as a chairperson under such serious uh, um, 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 allegations whereby a case has been opened, then it means it is an indictment to the processes of this committee. That is the first thing. The second thing, Chairperson, is that you are acting as if there is something to hide. You have made those points. You are repeating the same points. I'm wrapping up, Chairperson. And goes. So when people have got something to hide, they get easily agitated when they are being held accountable. Just like now we're discussing this issue and we're saying that we are not saying the process of the, the inquiry must stop, but we're saying the person that is chairing or the person that is presiding over this process that has got a serious allegation on the integrity of the process must step aside and allow a person that has not been accused of um, soliciting bribes to actually continue proceeding with the process. But the fact that um, you are being defended and now you do not want to step aside it clearly means there is and um, there could be truth to those allegations. Thank you. Thank you. The last speakers so that I can make the ruling and we we'll proceed to the next item. Honorable Majorzi Maneli, Nkosi, and Lotred. Thank you. That Thank order. you, Honorable Chairperson. I think I will still repeat. Let us not come into the inquiry with um, uh, our own object, uh, uh, objections and 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 thumb sucking of non-factual information and with no evidence that will be provided, uh, we 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 approved a program, Chairperson, on Friday that we are continuing with the inquiry on matters that we should conclude on. And I plead with you, Chairperson, that let us continue with those. What I'm saying means that members will go to the dictionary. Hallucinating is when members want to deal with non-factual allegations and nothing of an evidence that is brought forward. A case is opened. If that the case is opened and you are found that uh, you, you are found wanting, you should be arrested by now. We wouldn't be dealing with a chairperson. We would be dealing with the fact that we do not have a chairperson because our chairperson is arrested because of this evidence. So let us continue, chairperson. Uh, if we can take everything that is being said on, on media, I'm sure today we wouldn't be having a government or any other political party that is represented uh, for people. So you are not going to request yourself. We are going to continue with this inquiry up until we finish with the matters at hand. Thank you, Chair. Honorable Majosi, Honorable Maneli. Well, thank you, uh, Honorable Chair. I think my points have been covered by the previous uh, speaker that there's no recusal application before the meeting. It would help us that you take us to the next point because it was on point of orders that we are now discussing. 
you, you have dealt with the first part and you are giving to legal to also make input so that if we are to get in, we have a comprehensive approach to the matter. <clears throat> and I want, again, the last point here being a reminder again. We convened because there was a meeting of the committee on Friday. The conditions under which that committee was convened were such that the allegations were also there in the media. It is not like we are waking with a surprise today that there are those. And we entertained that discussion and hence we concluded that we proceed on the basis of how we said would proceed. So I, I also join those that say, Chair, do that, lead us uh, until the item is dealt with properly. Uh, of course, those who have got evidence, there are structures that have been referred to, and I'm sure that they, they would be able to even assist the process because I take it that we do not say things we do not mean and ask others to do things we cannot do. Help there. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Maneli. Honorable Ngozi? No, thanks, Chairperson. I, I, uh, I think the points that have been made by previous speakers, uh, I'm covered there on. Uh, save to one, remind the committee of our decisions on Friday that we took a decision to proceed irrespective or in, even in consideration of what was said uh, and appeared in the media. We have had numerous recusal applications here and, and I think at all times we arrive, arrived at the decision that to recuse oneself is not a light matter. Um, even uh, in the light of the seriousness of allegations that are, are tabled. Mm -hmm. An impression must not be created here that we do not take these allegations serious. We do take them serious. And that is why we are affording uh, you and the processes to, to conclude. Thirdly, that they, 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 they are referrals to the police and to a committee of parliament. And, and we should leave it at that, that those committees have not reported back, reported back to us. If there was anything really that impedes our processes, the, the speaker and the chair of chairs would have indicated such and would, would, wouldn't have met in this form. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think let's give those uh, bodies the opportunity to, to uh, reflect on those issues and take a decision. I support your proposal, Chair, that one, there must be a written application for recusal uh, substantive presented to this committee. Mm -hmm. And as we do with all other applications, we consider it. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and that your response to that uh, be as you have proposed, that you will respond by Monday. Uh, and uh, it is at that point that we'll entertain all these things that are being said here. That in, in, in arriving at a decision, as you take into consideration the benefit of what is being said here, but including the legal advice that you would have obtained from the committee uh, uh, support section. I just want to conclude, Chair, by saying uh, the following two things. One is that um, I, I, I really do feel that uh, uh, you, you and, and the powers that be should protect the committee. Uh, I, I don't want to express anything on the WhatsApps, but it, it, it shouldn't be that our our gadgets are held. It, it shouldn't be, Chair, because then there will be a very serious problem for all of us participating in, in the committee. Uh, if the privacy of our communications uh, personally and, and officially is compromised, then we face a very serious issue that uh, the institution uh, must protect us uh, uh, against. And, and lastly, Chair, my understanding is that it is the, the public protector who is accounting in fact, this word accounting uh, misleads. It is a public protector who appears as a subject of this committee. And that is, that is a focus that uh, we, must, we must zoom in on. It's, it's not any other thing other than the public protector appearing before us. She has a responsibility to answer to the, to the allegations on misconduct and incompetence as found prima facie, on a prima facie basis by the panel. And that is what we've been concerned with for the entire year up to this point. And I, I, I want you in making your ruling 
to take that into consideration that we are not here to to be inquiring on yourself or myself or any other person. Please emphasize that the public protector has an opportunity to come and answer on the, the allegations of misconduct and incompetence as found by the panel on a prima facie basis. And that is what must guide us. I agree that there's no reason for you to, to recuse yourself, one, and two, that we must proceed for three chair. And with that, I would like to apologize that I, I, I have to go to the ticket 12. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Ngozi. Honorable Lotrit, and Thank you, Chairperson. Um, yes, I just want to add my voice to the fact that I think we should stick to your initial um, decision and, uh, in, well, guidance that we need any application for a recusal in writing and that it is then up to you to decide whether you recuse yourself or not because for an hour and a half now we've heard assumptions, allegations, aspersions and I don't think it is doing this particular committee any favours. So I also propose that we proceed and then you await an in writing um, request for recusal. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Lotchit. Um, let me just then uh, make the ruling, uh, Honorable Members. Um, and it will be a very brief one because having listened to all of you, maybe before I, I, I do that, just to, to appeal to all of you as members that uh, um, we have been in this journey, uh, all of us, I want you to continue exercising um, the, the decorum, the, the patience, and your determination and commitment to ensure that we have a rational and a fair process. We've, we've done that against all odds, colleagues. If you, a, a pilot, is not uh, appreciated because of uh, how he got from point A to point B within a particular time. The pilot is appreciated for how he navigated turbulence and reached the destination with the passengers. Take that, it's very important. So as you get uh, sometimes irritated uh, by the kind of issues that in many instances have less to do with the business that we're in, it's important that you absorb that and that this inquiry as we meet, it's now at a tail end. We've got to conclude the important work that you have started. Nothing must really derail it. Uh, allow no side shows to do that. But it's important that we hear everybody. Uh, I don't sit here measuring uh, which inputs are important than the other inputs. Uh, I listen to all inputs, uh, even inputs critical to me as a chair, to absorb that. That's the reason why I'm a chair uh, and in chairing this inquiry. So I, I want to appeal to those members that feel that I should not have done this and that to say to you, we, we're going to stay focused uh, we know what what is it that we need to do. Um, on that network club is uh, in Afrikaans, where you can look side sideways. In, in English, is called blinkers. Uh, but but we know where we're going. Even if we take an off ramp, we have taken many of those off ramps. Uh, uh, some out of nature others created in, as part of this process. We've taken those off ramps, but we're determined that we're not stopping where the, we off ramped. We proceed. Uh, and I think we I can say that you were closer to us concluding this important parliamentary and constitutional work that we have been assigned to do uh, as members of this committee. A very novel process, historical committee in its own very nature and the kind of work that it has done. Nothing must derail it. Um, so as I make the ruling, I want to repeat um, what I would have said on Friday and 
and today. Firstly, there are allegations that are there, and those allegations have been channeled to proper platforms where they belong. Um, somebody made allegations, somebody reported those allegations to enforcement agencies, and who, as Honorable Ngosa says, do not try to preempt, to try to put pressure, to try to define how they need to do that. Let's allow, if the police are investigating these allegations, allow the police to do their work. Um, but let's not try and, and want to short circuit that. Let them do their work as they always do their work in all other cases. Secondly, the matter would have been reported in terms of the advice of the speaker. The speaker would have advised uh, when he re she received the letter from the public to say there's a committee of parliament where such matters are deposited. That matter has been deposited to that committee. Allow that committee to do its work. You can't have the, the work of that committee being ventilated in the inquiry. Those issues do not belong here in, in the inquiry. So that's a, the that's a first point. The second point, which I want to repeat, I've made it, if any member or anybody, and I would have spoken in response to the public protector's intention uh, that she indicated in the letter of recusal uh, of the chairperson, and, and I was saying, I welcome that, and I was saying it's important that if there is a recusal that is coming, that recusal must be done, and it must be done in writing, and I would have indicated so that we move with speed. Um, that on Friday, 1,300 hours, um, one would, have ex would expect that written recusal, if there is any uh, written recusal that, that really explains uh, why somebody must be recused. And, and secondly, uh, determined to work uh, throughout, even this weekend, to ensure that come Monday, 1,300 hours, there's a response to that written recusal. Thirdly, I did say that uh, we are not going to have an oral presentation of that recusal application. It will be done in writing and responded in writing, and the committee will have an opportunity to, 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 to navigate those issues and ventilate itself around those things. That is the ruling I, I make, which I repeat some of the things that I've, I've said before. I am now going to invite Ms. Fatima Ibrahim to take us through to what I wanted her to do in the first place. Thank you. Over to you, Mr. Excuse Ibrahim. Excuse me, uh, Chair Person. Have you not forgotten to respond to my point? It was different completely. Thank you. I, I, I think I did. You can remind me if you think I did not. You did not. I asked you to clarify for, to the committee as to what exactly is the public protector. A okay. A okay. A I hear you now. Um, my response, uh, Honorable Olamisa, is that as things stand, there is no there is no recusal application. In the letter of the public protector, there is an intention that that's that's what she, she will pursue. Uh, and and therefore what I'm doing, I'm encouraging both herself and anybody else uh, who, who wants to do the recusal to do that. So there is no recusal application in front of us as we meet here today. Uh, thank you, Honorable Olamis. But but Chairperson, what did she say? What is she asking you to us to do? We have a right to know that. Please just summarize it for. Me. Yeah, we will summarize that for you because Based it's part it. of the Based by you. Thank you. It's part, it's part of the update, uh, and it's also in the letters that we've sent to all of you. But we will we'll emphasize and, and lift it up uh, in terms of paragraph twenty-eight, uh, Ms. Ibrahim. And thank you, Chairperson. Chairperson. Was, was that? <laughs> a PP. Yes, my hand has been up. Um, are you going to be giving me an opportunity? Yes, I will give an opportunity. This the beginning. Thank All right. I will. Uh, Mr. Brian? 
Um, thank you, Chairperson, and good morning to yourself and um, all the members and everybody in the room today. Um, Chairperson, you've given a high-level um, overview of the correspondence. I'm going to try to zoom in on the salient points um, that will help the committee in terms of direction on the way forward. As you indicated after our meeting on Friday last week, um, us having then been informed that the issues relating to the uh, two juniors um, that Advocate Mpofu had requested, as well as the increase in the fee rates having been resolved, we then wrote to um, Chan attorneys um, indicating that we were going to resume uh, with the inquiry on the 5th of June, which would have been on Monday. Importantly um, for members, Chair, is the fact that in that letter, um, the Chair indicated that we will have regard to the request that was made, if I recall correctly, by Honourable Dlakudi, that we conclude the evidence on the Basasa CR17 and um, SARS matter. And members will recall that is something that was raised um, by Advocate Bauer after the conclusion um, of the portion on Basasa CR17, and, and the Chair didn't agree at that point, but it, the point was raised again uh, by Honourable Dlakudi last week. Um, chair deadline of the 4th of June at 1 o'clock was given to Chan attorneys to um, let the committee know if there's anything they wish to bring uh, to the attention of the committee before we were meant to resume on Monday. We received a letter on Sunday, the 4th of June, uh, where Mr. Chan indicated that they're not in a position to brief counsel because as the attorneys of record, they would need to familiarise themselves uh, with the records in the matter in order that they may properly um, brief counsel. Um, they said that furthermore, they won't be able to, to brief counsel until such time as the questions around uh, the payment issues are resolved. And in particular, what would happen once the 4 million um, cap had been reached and who would take responsibility for the payment of any fees uh, beyond that. And the request there was that the inquiry be postponed indefinitely until those issues um, are resolved. Um, Chair, we then uh, sent a response to that letter uh, where the Chair indicated that um, China attorneys had not uh, positively agreed to the request for a backroom meeting that had come uh, from the Secretariat where some of these matters perhaps could have been um, ventilated earlier on, and also that it wasn't clear as to why they were not in a position to brief Advocate Mpofu, being that the PP had made it clear that he was her legal representative of choice, and Chan attorneys, according to the correspondence from the state attorney um, and the information before us, were acting as correspondent um, attorneys. Um, and as I explained to members last week, um, in terms of our law, it's necessary that an attorney briefs counsel. Uh, because the PP would not have been able to do that herself, nor, nor the PPSA. In that letter, we also indicated again that consideration has been given to this issue of concluding the evidence in relation to the CR17, Pasasa uh, and SARS matters. And a further extension was granted uh, to 5 June at 2 o'clock, um, even though there was no request for an extension, but, but the Chair gave that further um, extension. On the 5th of June, Chair, we did not receive um, any response by that 2 p.m. deadline, but later that afternoon, uh, correspondence was sent from Chan attorneys indicating, as you said, Chair, that Mr. Chan is in hospital. And in terms of the letter um, that was signed off by one of his um, directors in the firm, she indicated that given the delicate stage and circumstances um, of this matter, Mr. Chan was personally giving the matter his full attention um, and therefore, it was not possible for any other person to meaningfully respond uh, to your letter. Um, the chairperson then wrote back to, to China attorneys um, very late that night. Um, and that letter contains the decision of the chair in respect of the conclusion of the evidence on the CR17, Basasa and SARS matter. Um, and members, if, if they read that letter, they'll see that it paints uh, the picture in terms of how the chair arrived at that uh, decision and all the reasons supporting it, but briefly, um, some of those, uh, some of those reasons, um, chair, uh, would be that the fact that um, the PP has um, raised her concerns about the fact that the evidence leaders had briefed the committee on these uh, these two matters in particular, and this would allow the uh, the PP now to respond to questions on those matters and to raise any issues that she has 
uh, in respect thereof, it will allow the committee uh, staff to start working on one part of the report at least, given that the fact that the PP had submitted her statement uh, in two parts. Um, we highlighted the importance of the committee completing its work before the PP's um, term ended in October, and of course also the duty of the PP for us to conduct our work um, in a reasonable time frame, because as we've indicated, she is the subject matter of the inquiry, and procedural fairness to her also requires um, that the matter is, is dealt with um, expeditiously. Um, then, Chair, you also pointed out in that letter that you take note of the Constitutional Court judgment, which indicated that accountability and fidelity to the rule of law is attained via this committee process. And to date, notwithstanding that this process has already been ongoing for some 11 months in the committee itself, and, and of course longer beyond that, um, the PP has still uh, to respond to members questions in any in any substantive way at least. Uh, the people of course did respond to some written questions earlier on um, in the process. Uh, the issue of public interest uh, was also raised. The chair then indicated that the intention is to resume yearlings today being Wednesday um, 7th of June and a copy of draft directives were attached to that letter for further comment by the PP and what those draft directives seek to do um, and it would be would have been sent to members is to concretize uh, this decision of the chairperson that we are going to conclude on the CR 17 uh, Basasa and um, SARS matter. Um, chairperson we then yesterday 6th of June um, received a letter from the Solicitor General um, and that followed on a letter from the Secretariat because what had happened is when the Secretariat um, received the correspondence from China attorneys indicating that they're not in a position to brief counsel. They then uh, sent these letters um, to the Office of the Solicitor General because the Solicitor General, of course, had, was, had now assumed this role of um, appointing China attorneys via the State Attorney to brief counsel. So it was then brought to the attention of, of the Solicitor General that this had not been done and that it uh, may result in delays to the committee process. And this, the Solicitor General um, responded to the letter, um, Chair, and he did raise concerns about the fact that the fees of counsel had been increased um, and that this may then negatively or adversely um, impact um, on the committee proceedings going forward. And he said it would be crucial to find a resolution that allows for the continuation of the inquiry and, and there were various um, uh, possible solutions that he that he raised that the committee could consider. However, Chair, that letter comes on the back of the PPSA having already instructed the state attorney um, that they could agree to the increase um, costs. Chair, we then received a letter um, addressed to yourself from the PP personally, not from, from Chan attorneys. And um, that letter would have been shared with members and it raises a number of issues. This is the letter that you refer to with the, with the various demands. Um, some of the issues, Chair, that you haven't touched on include the adequacy of this 4 million rand amount, which we know is ring fence and, and capped. Um, the PP also noted that she objects to uh, the communication from the PPSA, which was echoed in your letter as well, Chair, that she must bear the costs um, personally after the depletion of this 4 million rand. Um, she raised an objection in terms of your proposed way forward in dealing with um, the CR-17 Basasa and SARS uh, matter, and she indicated that since you had previously considered this request when Advocate Bauer had raised it and you had denied it at the time, you were functus officio, meaning that you can't reconsider a decision that you've already made. Um, she indicated that she has no reason whatsoever to delay the inquiry, whether deliberately or otherwise. Um, and in her view, the charges are spurious and baseless, and um, there is a scheme to manipulate um, the evidence before this committee. Uh, she indicated further that she intends to instruct her attorney to move an application for removal of the chair um, if you fail to voluntarily recuse yourself in relation to the allegations um, of bribery. And she, I think we've dealt extensively with that. 
um, but for the benefit of Honourable Palamisa, the, the public protector uh, did send through um, proof of the alleged uh, WhatsApp communication. And uh, my understanding is that the Secretariat has shared that communication um, with members. Um, in terms of the demands, Chair, was that the inquiry be suspended until all the outstanding issues relating to legal representation are resolved, including the recovery of um, Mr. Chani, who, as I said, had taken ill. And failure to comply with that uh, would result in an urgent court application. Chairperson, we then received a second letter from the SG without um, an intervening letter between the earlier letter that the SG had sent, where the SG indicated that in light of Mr. Chan's illness um, and the increase in council's fees, um, he's taken a decision Chair. to terminate Chair. of Chan. Chair. Yes. The, the, the speaker is repeating everything else that you've already said. So uh, is no. she writing your notes or, or, or what happened? You exchanged notes together. Because whatever she's saying is what you said already. No, no. Exactly no. like that. No. Honorable Maute, we're going to allow Ms. Fatima Ibrahim to proceed. Please do not do that. Go ahead, Ms. Ibrahim. Chair, the member will forgive me if it sounds like repetition because I'm merely capturing what is in the correspondence itself. Um, Chair, the SG indicated that he has made a decision to terminate the mandate of Chan attorneys um, and that the state attorney Pretoria will now act as correspondent um, attorney subject to the PPSA agreeing, the PPSA obviously being uh, giving the instructions since they, they carrying the costs. Um, the PPSA then responded um, affirmatively um, to the Solicitor General saying that this would be in order and that they see it as a cost-effective solution uh, because it does mean that the costs that would have had to be paid to China attorneys would now be a saving because the state attorney um, would play that role. Um, Chair, in this regard, I just want to raise paragraph 28.1 of the letter um, from the PP. Um, in which she indicates that counsel may be briefed either by her attorney of choice or the state attorney, whichever is mandated by the PPSA. And she I raised that because there was a question last week about um, possible conflict of interest if the state attorney were to assume this role and the PP had said she objected. Are you, uh, are you able to fly that, that, that part of those Yes, I'll ask, I'll ask Chepa to do that. Um, that the PP had indicated uh, an objection to that, notwithstanding that we had a previous letter um, from um, from the other attorneys, R RMT, if I have the name correct, we, um, they indicated that that would have been in order. Uh, but nonetheless, Chair, uh, as it currently stands, um, this is the direction from the PPSA that the state attorney uh, must proceed with the termination of the brief of Chan attorneys and they would then act in the stead of um, Chan attorneys. Chair, on this issue of the conflict um, of interest, I just want to raise that um, the state attorney typically deals um, or represents the state um, in, all its, in all its parts. So it is not uncommon that the state attorney would be acting uh, for litigants that are in fact acting against each other. So when you have departments... Um, perhaps that are involved in the same litigation, but um, on counterparts of that on that litigation, and they they have chair what we call a Chinese wall. In other words, there's an ethical barrier which is designed to prevent the information or flow of communication that could lead to a conflict of interest. Um, in in the case of this committee, um, our uh, dealings in terms of appointing the evidence leaders and dealing with all the litigation to date has been via. The attorney of this, the state attorney, Cape Town office, whereas this now would be via the um, state attorney in Pretoria. Chair, this morning um, we then received communication from Chan attorneys um, where they uh, provided us with a copy of a sick certificate indicating that Mr. Chan is booked off until further um, notice. But of course, events had overtaken this. Um, was not our role to communicate with them in terms of, of this brief because that is between um, the PPSA, um, the State Attorney and the Solicitor General. But while sitting here, Chair, um, we just received um, via WhatsApp a communication from Chan 
uh, where they've indicated that their brief has been terminated um, by the Office of the State Attorney. And I'll ask Shepard to share that uh, with members as well. So, Chair, that is where we currently stand. Chan Attorneys is no longer uh, participating in this process. The State Attorney uh, Pretoria assumes that role. And, of course, depending on the outcome of the uh, recusal application, um, we will advise on on the way forward, but that's as things currently stand. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Ibrahim. Um, I guess that there's no further point in addition. Maybe before uh, I proceed further, this would be an opportunity to recognize the hand um, of the PP, but I hope that members are now getting the summary of what has been presented, because what has been presented is indicating quite a, a number of developments that when the uh, China attorneys in the correspondence you have received would have uh, indicated that the person who was driving this has, has been hospitalized. Um, and, and today we have a sick certificate that we have received indicating that uh, he's been hospitalized until further notice. There's no date for when uh, he can come back. Um, as of last night and this morning, as indicated, we will receive both letters from the SG, uh, so the general, as well as the PPSA uh, CEO, confirming that uh, actually the state attorney have taken over that role uh, for the briefing of the council. Hence the WhatsApp message from China saying they are, they are uh, the role has been terminated. So I'm just summarizing everything else that would have been indicated. And in it, it is in that letter also, Honorable Oremisa, in paragraph uh, 28, where, and, and the people will speak for herself, where she is indicating what options are available to her uh, and, and the intentions she has. Uh, if it's proper with you, Honorable Members, can I now take this opportunity to to allow the PP to speak, having raised their hand, and then you can then come thereafter uh, until before we we then say what is the what is the way forward, and that way forward is informed by the discussions we had on Friday as this committee. Um, thank you. Um, I now recognize you, Public Protector. Um, good morning, Chairperson. Good morning. Members of uh, the committee, members of the public, thank you, Chairperson, for giving me an opportunity. Um, I would like to start by saying, Chairperson, um, the truth is that actually what uh, Fatima was indicating, um, which was not captured properly, um, and I've clarified in the letter that the council of my choice was not yet briefed. So I wanted to make sure that I write that letter. I was not supposed to actually communicate directly, but it's because my um, attorney was is admitted, is at the hospital. And I think um, um, it was going to be just uh, the end of it as well, Chairperson. And um, let's not expose um, even the doctors and, and everything because uh, the person, I mean, there's evidence that was admitted on, on the day I was up, supposed to, 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 to appear. So, um, and I indicated in the letter to person which I wrote um, to you, um, which you say members of the committee are having the, the, the letter. And uh, ideally, uh, the response was supposed to come from my um, uh, 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 attorneys. And in my letter, I was addressing what you are saying, Chairperson, that um, it is not true that all impediments to the inquiry um, have been lifted because I didn't have, a, I'm not having a counsel to represent me or counsel has not been uh, uh, briefed. And uh, another issue, Chairperson, is that um, paragraph 32 of your letter where you granted me until the at 4 uh, 2 p.m. of the 6th of uh, June uh, to make a representation re regarding the proposed change 
Um, yet on the fifth, then you further communicated your decision, which I think um, you um, uh, uh, just decided even before hearing my representation. In any event, uh, that's why I said um, those uh, directives will have to be dealt with by the council and uh, uh, the issues to be ventilated uh, properly because that's what, uh, well, you've mentioned and Fatima has mentioned. And I will also want to indicate, uh, Chairperson, that um, the Chane Atenis was uh, uh, appointed as the choice after Sianejo, taking into consideration that Sianejo was well versed with the, all the information. If it was not for that letter of uh, of the 1st of March, we wouldn't be sitting here. And it's not the fault of the committee, it's not also my fault uh, that that letter was written because we would have uh, proceeded well. But now there is this now blame uh, on me, and I don't know why, uh, by Honorable uh, Melda and, and them, that I'm delaying the process because we would have proceeded uh, properly. So um, the issue of the attorneys, I saw in the letter you were mentioning that they came late and I said they will address it themselves and that they are a correspondent. I don't understand that. Hence the paragraph 28 where I said Chane or any uh, state attorneys, but you remember there's a letter where the Solicitor General is conflicted and uh, even confirmed that in the previous meeting. And I'm so shocked that PPSA and the Solicitor General, they went ahead, they decide that they are terminating. I see this letter here, it's just a shock. The attorney is still in the hospital. I'm sitting here. I see a letter that the, 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 the mandate of the attorney has been uh, terminated just like that. So I don't know as well what does that say because Solicitor General understanding as well that they are um, uh, uh, well uh, conversant with the judgment of the Concord about the issue of uh, the attorney of my choice. Hence, I requested the panel of attorneys I then uh, indicated that another attorney can be Chani. So I don't know when they have agreed uh, with the state attorney, what does that uh, mean? Another issue, uh, uh, Chairperson, is that um, in your letter you were uh, alleging that I didn't give instruction to attorneys, which I also totally um, uh, do not agree with. And I mean, you could see that I've given instruction, instruction to the attorneys they were uh, proceeding with the matter and for the professional reasons, they were saying they cannot just go ahead and, 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 and deal with the matter without um, uh, reading the documents because that's how the legal profession works. I mean, state attorney will explain. I don't know whether they understand that. Fatima is the uh, legal practitioner and even evidence leaders. They know how to brief counsel. You cannot just be a postdoc as an attorney and not read and also you need to contribute. But then, I don't know then if the state attorney would want to take that responsibility and they are conflicted. And hence I said, Chairperson, I have no reason to to, to delay the, the, the inquiry. And um, the suggestion that uh, the um, uh, issue of the evidence leaders, what they are paid, um, that the News 24 article covered that, it's so wrong. And I indicated that I, it, I reject that because members of the public they have a right to also know, including Sukras, uh, who's always been blaming uh, me for the costs. So uh, people are not uh, subscribing to News24. So when you're referring people to News24 article, because you can't read that, and the headlines were speaking about Advocate Mpofu, was not indicating how much other the, the evidence leaders are paid. And uh, I think Honorable Mawutue raised that 10 months ago. And I don't know that process anyways for the members of this committee to also insist there on that. I don't know whether through your parliamentary process. So on the issue of the uh, 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 Honorable, um, the late uh, Miss uh, Jumat Peterson and the referral uh, to you and uh, the chief whip uh, and to address the issue that is CSA, um, Honorable uh, Ngola saying is, is rumor mongering and Honorable Majos, you even uh, were interviewed on TV and you said if evidence is brought, you will request the chairperson to recuse themselves. And I mean, I wrote the letter to the chairperson requesting the chairperson to recuse himself out of his own conscience, not to say, I um, I mean, I said as a last resort, I will do the application uh, to do that. And uh, secondly, 
um, I never asked uh, Miss uh, 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 Jumat to approach my husband and to have that. The case is opened, hence the, the, the journalist got the information from the police. And yes, I've lodged a complaint with the with the ethics committee. And unfortunately, the speaker published that I approached her and she advised me before even the newspaper articles which were mentioning uh, about the, her uh, uh, refusing to, to 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 meet with me, and I must indicate, Chairperson, that hence I'm saying to you, and what Honourable Oremisa is asking, I I find it difficult to appear before you as the Chairperson who has been implicated or who is alleged to have also sent uh, 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 Honourable Jumate, may her soul rest in peace, uh, uh, to come and solicit bribe uh, from my husband and Chairperson. I've had the audio, the recordings, and that recordings uh, will be made available as well to the committee and the members of the public will even hear for themselves where you and uh, Ms. Majordina are uh, uh, implicated in that recording. The police have been given that recording. Hence, I couldn't say uh, just sit after hearing and I said the case must be opened immediately. So, Majordina, if you say there's no concrete evidence, when there's WhatsApp, others were saying, no, there's no mention of you. There is a recording which the public will be hearing, which I've heard, where you uh, uh, were said to have solicited the, 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 the bribe, and you were called by name, and uh, Ms. Majordina was called by name on that. So if Honorable Sukras is coming here, I mean, it's so even embarrassing to find that can you, pause? Um, pause? can you pause there's a point of order can you pause uh, yeah honorable Ngosi? no thank you chairperson but with due respect um is is the pp now uh giving evidence on her own uh whatsapps to this committee this committee is not constituted to and it doesn't have the competence nor, nor the investigative powers to go into what she's saying I would, I would request that you go back to your ruling that the appropriate bodies to which this matter has been referred be the ones that determine the veracity or none of what she's saying. We can't sit here and listen to uh, that evidence being led here. Thanks, Chair. Now, th thank you, Honorable Ngozi. Uh, the, the point of order is upheld. I had made a ruling, um, PP, that... Uh, the, and I've mentioned these forums where whatever allegations or evidence people have uh, should be sent to them. It's not expected that in this inquiry, you would, even if you have got an audio, that audio must be sent to where it belongs. Uh, it belongs. So I would want you to, to restrain from uh, presenting what you have presented in those forums and bodies because it is not uh, appropriate for this meeting. Please go ahead. Chairperson, for, um, unfortunately, I will have the point of order, but if you read my letter, Honorable Ngos, um, is paragraph, um, paragraph 24, regarding the allegations of corruption against you, Ms. Um, uh, uh, the late Peterson and the Chief Whip, Majordina, your proposal that they should only be addressed in the media is both absurd and extremely self-serving. Contrary to your labeling, these are no hearsay allegations. In fact, this is incontrovertibly evidence in the form of WhatsApp messages and other conversations confirming the allegations beyond any questions. While it is indeed so that the allegations of criminality against you, Ms. Peterson, are subject of a police investigation and ethics committee, that does not remove the relevance to this work, Chairperson, because you are sitting here and I hear you've made a decision about the application I don't have legal representation currently. And uh, uh, when that uh, legal representation is availed, uh, and I will have to then make that application. But that is a fact which is there, Honorable Ngos. It's not hearsay. It's not veracity. The investigation is ongoing. I have the evidence before me. I've listened to, uh, uh, to, 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 to that. And it's at the core, yeah, at, at the center of this matter. So that's why I'm saying... So unfortunately, Chairperson, as members of the committee, I was raising this. I brought the evidence before you. It's in my letter. 
and it's so yes. disheartening. KP, I'm asking you again, please do not continue uh, speaking on this issue of made a ruling. I'm asking you not to continue doing that. Raise other issues that you want to raise. There's a ruling on this matter. But Jefferson, I'm reading my letter of order, in full. On a point of I'm order, I'm reading Chair. my letter in full. On a point of order, Jefferson. I've made a ruling on this matter. Point of order, Chair. Want, other issues you want to raise. This is not a platform for you to present that we have to find where that belongs. On, on a point, point of, of order, um, yes, uh, Honorable Zogol. Jefferson, the public protector is reading the correspondence from herself to you. She covered issues contained um, pertaining to the issue of legal representation. Um, now, when she's covering what it is there in paragraph 24 of a correspondence to you, and when she's saying that there is an audio recording, you seem to be agitated and you want to stop her from continuing with what um, you know she, she's covered in, her, in a letter to you. So, Chairperson, please protect the public protector. Allow her to detail what is in that written correspondence. I don't understand, Chairperson, how uh, you, know, you are going to want now to silence the public protector when she's dealing specifically with this issue. Because when she was speaking about the issue of legal representation, you had no issue. So please protect her. Allow her to address what is in that correspondence as, as full as it, uh, as it is. Please, Chair. Uh, thank you, Honorable Zuhula. That's exactly, that is, that's really not a point of order that you are raising. No, no, no point of order. Shared with all members. Please, let's not do frivolous point of orders, colleagues. Honorable Malima, what point of order are you raising? Chair, this is, this is, this looks so awkward. This looks so awkward that she now deals with issues that implicate you. And then you are the one that wants to cut her. You are censoring her uh, precisely for selfish and self-interest reasons. Please don't do that. Uh, uncomfortable as the issues may be, and that's what we said when we must recuse yourself, was to avoid exactly what you are doing. Uncomfortable as issues may be, allow her to speak. We have spoken on these matters. You made a ruling. She has never spoken. And it is her opportunity to speak Allow her to speak and say to her, once she has spoken, the matters uh, have been resolved and this is how we're going to proceed. But we're not going to be seen as if we're now censoring her because she's raising issues that implicate you. That is an abuse of platform. Please allow her to speak and will be done in no time. You are now in trouble. Thank you, Honorable Malema. Again, that's not a point of order, but I've allowed you to complete uh, what you're saying. The PP is a subject of this inquiry. She accounts to the National Assembly. When we make rulings, they apply equally to her about this. Honorable Mailam, is that a point of order? Chair, I've been covered by your, your comment earlier that you've made a ruling on this matter. In fact, you've, you've ruled twice on the, the matter now, and it's time to proceed with the rest of, of the uh, correspondence and then the evidence itself. So I would argue or I would urge that we actually uh, uh, move on to other matters and, and not get bogged down on this particular aspect which has been dealt with and ruled upon. Thank you. I'm back to you, PP, and I want to repeat the point. Um, if there's any other issues you want to raise, please raise. But on these issues that we have discussed and made the ruling on, uh, I would urge you, encourage you to prepare yourself to make such presentation to the Committee of Parliament where these matters have been. And, and, and I'm sure the allegations having been uh, lodged with the police, uh, that's also another platform. This inquiry is not that platform. The correspondence has been sent to all members. It's, it's, it's unheard of that I, I must now allow somebody to read their letter uh, to us here. We're, we're not uh, doing that. That's not a subject of what we're doing today. Please proceed. 
chair. My hand is up. Please recognize me. Yes, I recognize you. Yeah, chair, you are unfair because when we were speaking earlier on, the hand of the PEP was up. You never pointed at her when you were pointing at us. And that was before you made a ruling. So she never had an opportunity when we did to say whatever she's saying. And now she's saying it after you have made a ruling, which is not a problem, by the way. It's your problem because you jumped into making a decision without hearing everybody, including the PP. Now, PP must still make her point because she never made her point. You can say that to me because I made my point during my time, but she never did. This is the first opportunity that she's getting to speak on the issues that we were speaking about ourselves. So allow her to finish her points. It doesn't matter whether you made a ruling or not. It was premature your ruling or the decision. It's clear now with PP giving this evidence. So you should never have rushed to lock her out and make a decision because now you must still go back to that decision that you made, which is now what the PP is addressing. So allow her to finish her presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Outre. Your order not upheld. And I come back to you again, PP. Uh, and I'm asking you, I've given you an opportunity uh, to, to, to speak on, on what I would have presented in the legal uh, advisor, I'd want you to say the same. <coughs> Why are you so agitated when the PP is providing no, evidence? Honorable Zungula, I've not recognized you, and I'm not going to repeat this. You do that again, and you know what is going to happen. Honorable, mm -hmm. I mean, public protector, I'm now coming back to you to. Chairperson, mm -hmm. I, I think. Raise whatever that you, you have not raised so far, but please don't re re repeat issues that. I've made a ruling on. But Jefferson, that's an unfair process. Um, legally, that's so wrong. I think even your advisor should be telling you that and shouldn't have allowed you to make a ruling without hearing my side of the story. But then Jefferson, I've even attached the WhatsApp messages uh, which um, should be shared with members of the committee. And uh, unfortunately, Jefferson, this is at the heart of this pr uh, particular process. So my issue is, again, the issue of recusal, it's before the SCA now. Remember, the, 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 S the Western Cape has indicated that um, they've aired, and then the matter is before the SCA. And chair, this process chair, sorry was to, to request you. Chair, chair. Chairperson. Mr. Janji, yes. No, no, no. PP was talking about the WhatsApp messages. Can they be flattered on the screen, please? So that we can see them as she's I'm speaking. Sorry, not there. This inquiry is not about that. I'm not going to continue giving you platform and you deal with previous, uh, uh, frivolous points of orders, Honorable Mautre. Public protector, please, I want you now to conclude your presentation. No. Okay, Chairperson, the issue of you, the one you're saying I must put in writing, um, uh, it's in my letter. It's related to corruption, um, extortion of bribe. And in my conclusion, I think Steve Biko mentioned that black, uh, 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 you know, uh, black people, you are on your own. Mm -hmm. If you've got uh, members of parliament um, just dealing with their own like this, and I mean, when you listen to the audio, you will hear what uh, the, the 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 MP uh, 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 Tina, the late Tina, was trying to do, and what you have put in your letter indicated that you will be proceeding. You'll hear it's exactly the recording will prove that that that's what you were planning to do, and is confirmed by the recording which Miss uh, Jumade is saying. So unfortunately, if you are going to be just treating her like this when she was trying to also, I mean, I must indicate that in other ways, she was also trying to sensitize me that this is the the horrible process which you are subjected to. And I've said it several times, but uh, Chairperson, I don't have legal representation. And I think um, my counsel must still be briefed and um, the counsel will have to uh, be available so that we can we can proceed. But as I indicated, I don't agree with you now uh, reversing your decision because you've decided that we were proceeding with my evidence 
and even the program will have to give uh, my program uh, and deal with all the issues which you promised. The record is there. And this leaves me with no option that I will also have to tell my side of the story and engage members of the public what I'm subjected to and to sit in front of the uh, chairperson who is uh, uh, alleged to have been uh, 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 corrupt. So I think I will just end there. I can't do the recusal application because I don't have legal representation. Until that is done, I won't be able to meet the Friday deadline which you are giving me. I need to have legal representation so that I can do the application. Thank you. Uh, thank you, public protector. Uh, colleagues, we're now going to take a 15-minute tea break, come back, and then we deal with the way forward. Thank you. Recording stopped.
Uh, I am aware and I will make sure, as I've always done, uh, from February when it was pointed out to me that uh, there's debt that was not paid and uh, I I gone out of my way as a chair to the to the harsh criticism of the committee that I had no business uh, to assist on issues of non-payment. And I've accepted that criticism. I, I live with it because it was my view that uh, I needed to do that in order to make sure that nothing impacts negatively this inquiry. And I'll continue to do that as even from today onwards about the fact that uh, we now know that uh, the state attorney has uh, taken up that role uh, given the unfortunate uh, incident of uh, hospitalized uh, uh, Chinese attorneys and they have taken that particular decision which we have nothing to do. It's not our role. Uh, but I am aware that there's going to be a process today to conclude uh, on this issue of uh, the briefing uh, of the senior counsel, uh, how long that takes shouldn't be a, a, a complicated and difficult process. Um, and because of that, honorable members, uh, I, would, I would want, in staying true to our discussion on, 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 on Friday as a committee, that uh, instead of asking you to that we, we resume tomorrow, and I'm going to ask that we resume on Friday uh, based on the resolution we, we took, based on the letter that I would have sent to the PP, that when we resume, uh, the subject of that resumption is, is to start um, with the attending to the first part, uh, first two part subject matters that we dealt with, the CR-17 and Bosasa, as well as the SARS matters, as discussed in the committee, as indicated in my letter. Uh, that's what when we resume are going to do. And perhaps tomorrow can give us that chance for whatever things that must be sorted out in the briefing of, of the senior council for that to be done. I, I was tempted to say, let's resume tomorrow, uh, but I'm holding back to, to, to give that space at least an extra day. And we, we come back on Friday at 10, we we'll resume with an inquiry, uh, and, and when we resume, it is about starting with the evidence leaders uh, in, in asking questions to the PP, that to be followed by, by the members. This is where we, that's, that's really the plan and attitude in, 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 in moving forward. And as I've indicated, um, the moment we close this meeting, uh, I'm going to be hard at work to ensure that that briefing is done and then is concluded. Um, and, and so I do not see, uh, and I hope that it is not going to be any other new hurdle uh, that gets to be there this afternoon and tomorrow that will come on Friday ready uh, to resume and proceed with, with the inquiry. And, and so I don't want to repeat other things I've said. Anybody else who's aggrieved, there are platforms where they must attend and submit uh, their grievances on any matter. So with that, colleagues, um, unless there's anything else, um, this is where I would like us to adjourn today's uh, meeting. I see your hand. Chairperson? Chairperson? I see, I, see, I see the hand of Honorable Olomisa and Honorable Sukas. I can, I'll come back to you, PP. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chairperson and the committee members. Whilst we are waiting for the meeting on Friday, can the committee secretariat or yourself write a letter to the speaker and, and possibly paint a picture of what took place this morning regarding the issue of the attempt to extort the husband of 
the public protector. And by doing so, you should request her, the, chap the, the speaker, to ask the police as to whether there is any sub substance to what has been reported in the police so that uh, we remove this dark cloud hanging over this committee. We are not talking about recusal, but we have a right to be informed. There have been a lot of serious allegations. So all what we want to know now is somebody must verify the authenticity or otherwise of these allegations. Otherwise, some of us are going to have very difficulty in proceedings where the chairperson is being uh, associated, allegedly, with those nefarious things. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Honorable Alamista. Honorable Sukas? Yeah, Chair. Thank you, Chair. I appreciate and uh, um, welcome your, your ruling. Chair, mine is to just bring a matter up that was briefly touched on by um, Honorable Nkosi, and it is the issue of security, the issue of security, especially of members of this committee. We've had um, several times subtle, not so subtle at times, things being said, um, and I think, Chair, that uh, we need to look at the digital security and even physical of members of this committee. And so I want to bring that out um, and on the record here, Chair, uh, in light of, uh, in support of what was mentioned by Honorable Nkosi. Mm -hmm. That it is a matter to be looked at. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sukas. Honorable Zimula. Chair, um, in the next meeting, can we kindly... Um, perhaps discuss this issue of the extortion at length. Um, the PP did state that she is uncomfortable to, um, to sit before you um, or to be presided in this process by, by you, whereas there are these serious allegations. Just as Utata U, U General just said about this dark cloud, so can we as a committee thoroughly discuss have all of the WhatsApp conversations being um, flighted and discussed, including the audio recordings um, being um, uh, to be broadcasted so that each and every member of the committee is aware of what is alleged so that when we move on, Chairperson, we don't move on in this process, um, you know, not being certain whether the Chairperson is innocent or guilty. Um, because currently, Chairperson, there are serious allegations, and if we do not properly process those allegations from our side as a committee as to what shall we do, we're not saying there must be investigation by the police or we must do the work of the ethics committee, but we need to have all of the evidence before us, all of the allegations before us, then in our context or perspective as a committee, we make a determination. That determination does not seek to undermine the work that would be done by the other agencies, but it is something that will assist the committee to say, as the committee was made aware of these um, allegations, we did not just ignore as if they are not serious. We do not just ignore as if they do not have a bearing on the work of this committee. So that is the proposal in the next committee. Let's discuss. We want those um, WhatsApp conversations flighted. We want that um, voice recording to also to be played so that the committee hears everything, the, the evidence leaders, legal representation of the PP, including the entire public that has been following these processes to know what is alleged about the chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Zungula. Honorable Suela. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, um, I'm supporting your ruling chair and also supporting Omes Tenkosi. I believe we need to move as a committee because we've taken a decision that we're going to deal with the two aspects. Uh, those is other issues, Chair, 
I believe there are institutions or sectors which can deal with them. We are, we are not police ourselves and we are not judiciary. And the speaker, in terms of the rules, uh, she knows exactly uh, on how to deal with issues. So I think to be uh, progressive, let's proceed with what we have planned as the committee. Those other issues will come uh, if they are there, but they must not jeopardize the work of this committee. We want to conclude and also to uh, second the latter speaker, the issue of threats. There are a lot of things which uh, some of us were being uh, named that were not doing well in this committee. So if one would want to zoom into uh, rumors will delay this process. So the issue of security is, is critical to all members, but to lose focus and involve ourselves to other issues, I don't think that we'll be doing justice in front of, uh, of public. So let's resume on Friday and we'll proceed. Those other issues will unfold while we're on our way. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Suela, Honorable Mautua. Uh, thank you, Chair. Chair, mine is the uh, one is that the PP did say that she will not be able to meet your Friday deadline because she doesn't have a legal representative. And I don't know what informs your Friday deadline. I mean, wh why would you want to give it? The person says, I want to bring an application. What informs your deadline of Friday? And even after she has told you that her legal representative is, is, is lying in hospital, fighting for his life. You still ignore that. What kind of a human being does that? You still ignore that the fact that a person is fighting for his life. There's no normal person who will go to hospital to, 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 to allege that he's sick. But he's not sick, to fake sickness, to be in hospital in this cold weather. No one. The person is sick. The PP doesn't have a legal right because the person is sick. There's a sick note attached to that. You're not a doctor to challenge another doctor's medical certificate. So clearly she won't meet the Friday deadline. Number three, Chair, <clears throat> is that you, you are saying that it's not your duty to assist the PP. I don't think there's any request for assistance from your side on the side of PP. PP is just telling you that it's not practical. And you say you want to continue on Friday. How are you going to continue on Friday, Chairperson, really? Without the PP having legal rep. You see, we are taking us back now again. She does not have legal rep. It's, he's, he's lying in the hospital. When I know you're ignoring, you're going to continue. How is that going to happen? Just explain to us. Your decision is irrational, Shepperson. And you get so agitated when you raise this matter. I raised a matter earlier that the PP is telling us about the WhatsApp messages. Can they be flattered? No. You, you Your temper just went up. Skyrocketed. Because you don't want... The evidence that points to you that there are WhatsApp messages. Now there's also recordings. We want to hear those recordings. They must come here, Chairperson. It's about you. You brought them and they are talking about this committee, those WhatsApp messages and those uh, 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 recordings. They're not talking about any other thing except this committee that you are chairing and yourself are involved. So please, in the next meeting, before anything, any evidence of anything from the PP, we want to hear those recordings. We want to see those WhatsApp messages and then we, 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 we can move from there. But we still feel strongly that you must recuse yourself. You fail to recuse yourself. We are appealing to you before Friday. But just write the letter say and say, I'm done. Let me leave it to other people to continue with this honorable committee of parliament. Please, we're honorable members here. And if anything taints the name honorable, you should be very worried as an honorable member, which you are not. So please say, just recuse yourself. We want to continue with this committee peacefully without any fight. I thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mawitwe. <coughs> Honorable Maila. Chairperson, I'm concerned at the spurious attempts to derail this committee by introducing things that are outside our scope and mandate. I am concerned that members of this committee are now trying to adjudicate matters over which we have absolutely no authority.
I'm concerned that this is yet another delaying tactic intended to run out time for this committee. And we are not dealing with the substantive issues which the public protector needs to provide evidence on. So I want to urge that we set aside all the irrelevant and uh, extraneous issues and that we focus directly on the evidence of the public protector, that we deal with the issues that we are mandated to address and that all the other issues be dealt with by the relevant forums, whether that is the SAPS, whether that is the uh, Ethics Committee or the Speaker of Parliament or whoever it is, it is certainly not this committee. So I want to, I want to stress that what Honourable Maotwe and Honourable Zungula and Honourable Malema and Honourable Holomisa are putting on the table is actually not the work that we are supposed to be doing. And until we are instructed otherwise by the National Assembly, we need to deal with the evidence of the public protector and the, the cases and the charges that have been put within our scope of work. And anything else is merely delaying and, and running out the time, running out the clock on this hearing. We cannot afford that. So regardless of what has happened, we have now afforded the public protector multiple weeks to secure legal representation. I see now that the Solicitor General has stepped in to, to fill the gap. Um, and I, I think that was, I'm not sure if it was Solicitor General or the State Attorney. I'm sorry, I, I, I get confused there. Um, but either way, that they are filling in the gap and, and prepared to assist. Um, the public protector has had every opportunity to, to secure legal representation. Advocates and Porfu is, is still her counsel of choice. We need to proceed, Chair. We can't keep twiddling our thumbs and hoping something is going to improve. So I, I really think that, that as a committee, we need to be firm and say, on Friday, when we, when we resume, we will be listening to the evidence of the public protector. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Mailam. Honorable Malema. Thank you very much, Chair. You see, the problem of white supremacy is that it's very insensitive, especially when it comes to black life. That's why even when you are told that a person is fighting for his life uh, in hospital, you'll speak the way uh, some people just speak here, that no, Friday we must continue as if nothing's happening. Uh, uh, the point has been made that the public protector's lawyer is fighting for his life and public protector will not be able to proceed in the absence of his legal representatives. That's number one. So we have to be alive to that reality. So even when we prepare for Friday, uh, we should be able to uh, make a room for that uh, reality. Secondly, we now Mukhonyana when Oscar Rena were part of trying to postpone uh, or delay this thing. I'm not part of any postponing of anything. Let's ama mo kikabu khub. Let's ama lo kupela di chele or balo feli bride kamu kuni kibeke sewa. I will not have anticipated that some amongst us would have gone to ask for bribes. So when we come to this committee, now that the matter is here, which was not brought by us, this matter arises out of those who suffer from an uh, uncontrollable desire for money. They went and tried to solicit bribes. And this matter is in the public, and this matter is in the public interest. You say, we want to delay, you even mention our, our names, that we want to delay uh, these proceedings, as if we are the ones firstly who took this matter in public, as if we are the ones who went to seek a bribe. It cannot be correct that when we are sitting in this committee, there are serious allegations that affect the integrity and the work of this committee, and we say we must not discuss it. This morning you said, that no, there's nothing that was put forward to this committee to be discussed. Honorable Zungula makes a fair proposal. Can we please, as we meet next week, discuss this matter? We're not going to investigate. 
You see, the problem with parliament is that it will make you sit in committee and come across some low-minded members of society. Mutawana bulela ukarunji mulu ngwadi picha ta society so. Kilu eche risban subjected to johanam. So, we are not talking about police, we are, not, we are talking about a discussion about matters that affect the image, the integrity, and the running of this committee. Not necessarily that evidence must be led. But because we, are, we have got some members of society who emerge through factionalism and find themselves sitting at this level, we have to engage with the lowest brains which tell us, hey, we are not police, we are not this. Guri, mutuno chelu cha chimunga to gula ugaru chimumu, ugaru wa lema. We're not talking about that. We're talking about us as members. How do we go about the business of this committee if there are these serious allegations? Not that there must be leading of evidence, there must be this. No. These are the issues that are in the public domain. It is about our members the chairperson is implicated. Can we discuss these issues and chart a collective way forward? That is not an investigation. It has nothing to do with the police. It has nothing to do with relevant committees that investigate misconduct. It has got everything to do with the integrity, the image, and the work of our committee. How do we make sure that we are not compromised as we continue to participate in this committee? It's about us. And we cannot be denied that opportunity, in all fairness, to discuss ourselves. That because we are sitting amongst us here with people who are alleged to have solicited a bribe. And the last point, Chair, I want to make, that there are certain people here who speak about security. They can never be threatened by anyone. There's no one. Of course, that's why man's history sometimes comes to prove the other things that did not happen in the past correct or this could have been a, an, a terrible accident of history they say there is a threat and all of that they don't lead evidence there's nothing substantive to support such and even those who come to support such that there should be a protection and security such people cannot be threatened by anything not even chicken that they have in their own fridges can threaten them They've got nothing in their lives that can constitute a threat. Who would want to go into phones of such people to do what? So there's no any evidence of any threat, none whatsoever, and therefore cannot be entertaining imaginary things here. I don't need any protection. I've got no threat on my uh, personal phone. Even if there was, there's nothing in my phone that I'm worried about. There's nothing in my phone that I'm worried about, which is not, uh, which if exposed to the public will embarrass me. Only those who keep wrong things in their phones will be obsessed with the security of their phones because they know that they, th they do things at night which they don't want to, those things to be repeated uh, during the day. I've, I've never for a single day uh, experience any threat to my phone, any threat to my participation in this committee, because I'm not engaged in any crooked means. So therefore, Chair, there's no need to even entertain any requirement of security here, which is, is not substantiated by anyone. A person just says, yeah, our phone, yeah, our security. Their, their night work is following them, and they want to involve us in their messy things that they are doing at night and they are likely to be exposed during the day. Now they want everybody, including parliament, to spend money on their crooked things. We need no security here. All we need is honest members of parliament who live an honest and honorable life and have got nothing to hide even in their private phones. We have nothing to hide in our phones because we don't go around asking money to get people to have a fair a trial. So, Chair, please be alive to what is potentially going to happen on Friday by the public protector who's entitled to have public uh, um, um, legal representatives. And we want this matter, a very serious matter that affects the integrity, the image, and the operation of this committee to be on the table. We, it is well within our right as members of this committee to propose items that can be discussed in the best interest of this committee and in the public interest. Thank you very much. Thank you. Honorable Maneli. 
Thank you, Honorable Chair. Um, I, I, I take the opportunity, Chair, firstly to agree with uh, the ruling that you've made. And this ruling is informed at least by a discussion that the committee had last week as a starting point. Uh, but, but just to give evidence that when we attend the meetings, Chair, we do listen to the proceedings and we make inputs on the basis of those proceedings. Today's Chair, in the proceedings of this meeting, we've been presented with correspondence, which includes the fact that there's been termination of services of the RTD, so referred to, hence the, 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 the Solicitor General would, would have come in. And the break you are asking for is the fact that uh, there may have not been the briefing that has been concluded with senior counsel of the PP's choice. And they are giving that space. And I think that is fair to do so because the PP herself said, uh, as far as she's concerned, there's never been any briefing of what, what whatsoever, even with the attorneys that would have uh, uh, had a person landing in hospital. So I'm, I'm saying, Chair, we should uh, agree with that because that's at least information presented in the proceedings of today. And therefore, any referral uh, to the attorneys that they'll have people in the hospital and that would mean that we would have not looked at what is presented before us, that that service has been terminated. Uh, and on a similar basis, this committee before, Honorable Chair, had an understanding that this is a continuation uh, matter, and therefore Sianejo would proceed. And we're reminded of a letter uh, written by the PPSA, which uh, terminated, terminated uh, Sianejo, and therefore you'll start a process I knew would have not engaged this other lawyer. So we should respect all those uh, that we are where we are because in some instances there have been termination uh, of service. Uh, so, so with that having been said, Chair, let me then get to the next point. We have a program that we have adopted and we said these are matters that must be dealt with and this has not been done by you as the chairperson. It's a program adopted by the committee in a committee meeting for those who attended. And of course, if we continue in that way, it means we must respect the decisions that we make ourselves uh, as the committee. And it is us who review those decisions. But at this point, there's not been review of that decision by the committee. Being matters that uh, are not in the program that we have agreed upon. Chair, I want to uh, uh, leave this point by reminding you again when we said proceed that so far the conditions under which we had a discussion on Friday on these allegations, nothing has changed. That it is hearsay that you have in the media. And there is no recusal application that states in detail why you are implicated as a person, not what they hear you to be implicated. And of course, Chair, I still plead with members who seem to be having some evidence that we do not have, that at least they must help the investigation by presenting the evidence that they have so that we do not say things we do not mean and ask others now to do things that you yourself you would not do of relying on allegations that are untested. Uh, and when there are structures that can test uh, those with capacity that is necessary. So, so I'm saying, Chair, other than protecting anybody, it is also about us doing things the right way. Because there can be allegations to borrow about any of the members uh, in fact, all of the members, if we are drawing the committee into this as a whole, and therefore it means uh, we must go back to Parliament and say on the basis of allegations that have not been tested, dissolve the committee and create a new one because they are tainted. 
Now, Chair, I don't think we should agree uh, to that. And, and that's why if there are those that may be implicated in one way or the other, test those. And once there is evidence to show, surely under normal circumstances, we would not want the committee to be associated with wrongdoing because that has never been the intention to be in the committee. We've committed ourselves to be independent people. Uh, who, who look at matters that are before us and look at facts for that matter that are before us so that our, 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 our recommendations later on must really be informed by things that can also be tested that any reasonable person could have come to that conclusion given evidence that has been presented before them. Uh, I, I'm really pleading, Chair, that uh, we give that chance uh, so that senior counsel is informed um, uh, of these changes that may have happened, uh, as well as get briefed on how to proceed uh, going forward in line with the program. Uh, and I don't think we should review before we even see anything that happens out of that. I submit, Chair. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Maneli. Honorable Paula Nwala. Uh, Paula Nola. Uh, chair, chair, apologies. Uh, I was mute. I was muted. I just am rising to support your ruling. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Nola. Honorable Zandile Majosi. Thank you, Chairperson. Uh, firstly, let me uh, welcome your remarks and your ruling uh, in terms of what will happen on Friday and it is accepted. And um, uh, to say that, Chairperson, uh, uh, for us as honorable members in this committee, that um, uh, on Friday other members are saying we must fly to WhatsApp messages and recordings so that we are able to to discuss that at the end, at, at the same time, the legal team of the public protector as much as we are now the information is shared now would there's someone that is ill and um she wouldn't mind coming to the committee and presenting that without her legal team but when there are other proceedings it becomes a problem and uh, also to say that chairperson uh, there are two processes that are followed in 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 every institution and there is a correct platform where the evidence will be shared. And I still say, Chairperson, if the evidence comes to this committee to say the Chairperson, yes, is found implicated in one, two, three, four, five, we will have a consensus decision that will take as this committee. But for now, we can't deal with such uh, allegations while the public protector is telling us that they've presented the the, the evidence. So we must wait for the outcome. And then if it comes to us, we deal with that at, at that moment. But for now, we must continue with the program that we've adopted on Friday. Chairperson, um, lastly, uh, I, I want us to bring our humanity and, um, and understand and not mention the name of the late Honorable Peterson, because we are not dealing with um with her or with whatever that uh, allegations are put but we here we are mandated to do one thing only and that is what we are going to do and of the program that uh, we have adopted uh, on friday that is what we are going to do i accept your ruling chairperson let us continue with that and not and let us refrain from losing the decorum of this inquiry thanks chair Thank you, Honorable Majosi. Honorable Berner. Thank you, Honorable Chair. Chairperson, um, I said it last week as well. We've bent over backwards to be procedurally fair in this process towards the public protector. There are mechanisms to her disposal or at her disposal if she's not satisfied with the process and if she's not satisfied with the findings. So I agree that we should move forward. And I just want to make a comment in passing. 
just as there is a duty on this committee to act in a procedurally fair manner, as we have been doing, there's also a duty on legal representatives who accept instructions, especially instructions such as these, which are extremely high profile, time bound and sensitive to do what they have to do to, in order to stick to timelines and ensure that the client is properly represented. So it's just a comment in passing. I'm not sure if the entire legal team is in the hospital, but I'm sure that there is someone that can assist the public protector, but that's just a comment in passing. I'm just saying that it's not for the record. So I agree we should f move forward and we should continue with the mandate that was given to us. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Dana. The last one is Honorable Zagude. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Chairperson. Good afternoon uh, to you, my colleagues, evidence leaders, and everyone who's on the platform. Honorable Chairperson, my apologies for coming uh, at this time. We have uh, visited the family of our of the late uh, comrade Tina Jumat Peterson, and the family is really hurting, as we are hurting as well, because she was one of us, member of this committee. So I will request that as members of parliament, let's stick to our mandate. Let's refrain from be bringing allegations that are not part of our our program to this meeting. And also, I agree fully with uh, Honorable Majose that as human beings, let's be sensitive to what has happened. The family, the children of the late are hidden. So I think we should refrain from that. As parliament, we have processes on how to deal with matters. Let's allow those processes to unfold. So anyone who have anything should take whatever they have to the relevant uh, to the relevant uh, processes. As this committee, Honorable Chairperson, I want to say that we had a meeting last week. We adopted a program and a way forward for us as to how to move forward. I think in one of what we agreed upon is that we need to conclude the two matters that evidence have been led in this committee. I think that's where we are. Indeed, we wish the person who is in hospital a speedy recovery, but we have a responsibility as this committee to conclude our work. This is not the only committee in parliament that we are, we are serving in. So we really need to conclude the work. We appreciate that if, like you have ruled, if the, 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 the new legal team of uh, the, public, the, the, the public protector and the SC haven't been briefed, we agree, we, uh, we agree with you for that uh, opportunity to be briefed. But the work of the committee must proceed so that we finish what we have started. Evidence have been led on the two matters. Let's conclude those, then move forward. Thank you very much, Honorable Shah. Thank you, Honorable Zakode. I now give the opportunity before I summarize uh, to the public protector. Uh, um, I need to clarify that um, paragraph 26 of my letter, again, if it was read, um, I won't read paragraph 25 because it's still repeating um, Honorable, um, the late um, Honorable Peterson, Jumat Peterson. 26 says, failing the above, I intend to instruct my attendance. In fact, the last uh, is sentence in paragraph 25, it says, in such circumstances, you should voluntarily recuse yourself. Then I said 26, failing which... I intend to instruct my attorneys to move an application for your recusal. Your statement that no address will be permitted is therefore inappropriate to say the least. So I was going to instruct the attorneys, which attorneys, I think for the other members, 
uh, which has been clarified that the, the attorney has been abruptly withdrawn or their services terminated by the state attorney without even telling me because I also had it when I came here and I, the CEO didn't discuss with me or even the, 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 the solicitor general. That's one of the critical issues. And secondly, uh, uh, Chairperson, the, the, the attorney will be the one. Actually, the, the judgment is very clear. Uh, full legal representation uh, of my choice. So um, that uh, issue, I don't know, we'll have to discuss and I ha I'll have to be involved and consulted why state attorney just terminated the services of the attorney. And unfortunately, one doesn't call uh, or doesn't invite to be sick and, and just uh, 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 go to the hospital. I mean, uh, the attorney was ad admitted on, on, on the 5th. And unfortunately, no one has control over that. And another thing, Honorable uh, Lagute, unfortunately, what you are saying, you discussed on Friday, you came to the conclusion as a committee, you have the right to do that. And unfortunately for you is that that's what uh, Honorable, the late Honorable P uh, uh, Jumat said, that the committee is playing to do that. They've appointed a, a, a project manager. So, but those recordings are there. And indeed, you are doing exactly what she said. May her soul rest in peace. And unfortunately uh, for, uh, you, for, for, for you is that uh, the way she was treating this matter, it was because she was very concerned. Uh, and hence, I'm saying, un unfortunately, uh, the way uh, she has been treated as well, it's so unfortunate that people are discussing like this as if um, a person has died after that decision which you've taken on Friday. Thank you. And the Thank Friday you. issue, Chairperson, unfortunately, I, I don't have an attorney to prepare that. And I think it's clear in my letter, is recorded that I'll instruct an attorney because... I wanted to hear from you whether you are refusing to recuse yourself. Mm -hmm. And I take it that you are refusing to recuse, to recuse yourself voluntarily, Chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, PP. Uh, thank you, colleagues. I think uh, having listened to all of you um, and have, have, having indicated before um, the summary that I made and the ruling. Uh, stands that uh, we are going to convene on Friday at 10 o'clock and proceed with the resumption of the inquiry as designed by the committee last Friday. Um, I've indicated that if there's any planned uh, or recusal application that anybody wishes to, to have uh, that uh, would welcome that to be submitted by Friday in writing, uh, and I repeat, we'll respond to it by Monday, uh, 1300 hours. I think the matters have been very clear in the letters about the fact that as we meet here and as we're going to meet on Friday, the unfortunate uh, situation of the attendants being hospitalized um, has been taken up by the state attend, who has taken over and um, that there should be no confusion uh, there. Um, and we have received uh, properly so a, 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 a certificate that indicates uh, he's hospitalized until further notice without going into any, any, any details in that regard. And so the role of the state attorney is really assisting uh, your sentiments, the discussion you had on Friday to ensure that uh, we, we no longer get into uh, stops in this process. We proceed with our work uh, in, in, in that regard. I've taken note of all of the issues that uh, you all of you have commented on, but uh, Friday's business uh, is the resumption of the inquiry. Uh, both Friday's meeting and the enders of today, members are very clear. Our focus is on the mandate of this inquiry uh, and nothing else. And therefore, that's how we're going to proceed uh, from Friday. Uh, with that, thank you very much. The meeting is adjourned until Friday at 10.